In this video, the patient was diagnosed with sensory stroke, sensory stroke, and received appropriate treatment. Her symptoms improved, and after a few weeks of physical rehabilitation, she returned home to live with her daughter. Five years later, the patient dies of large MI. She died of that. On autopsy, there are two five to six millimeter cavities in the deep structures of the brain filled with clear fluid. Which of the following best, best explains the autopsy findings? So you have here, this patient is 76 by the way, you would have known if you have seen the previous video. So she's 76, she had a stroke, she was treated for the stroke, now she had an MI, she died from the MI. Because she died, an autopsy was done and two cavities were found which were filled with clear fluid, 5 to 6 millimeter. Okay? Which of the following best explains the autopsy findings? Now this kind of questions I find the most tricky where the signs are not that obvious but it is obvious in a way that you know it's so not obvious that you kind of have to take it what it is. So to me the biggest thing since they didn't talk about any other problem like she had stroke I could assume she had hypertension or diabetes or something right but what they did tell us is that she had two cavities filled with clear fluid of five to six millimeter in the deep structures of the brain the most common cause of about five millimeter cavities in the deep structure of vein structure of brain is lacunar infarcts and the most common cause of lacunar infarcts is going to be hypertension and the most common cause of hypertension which leads to lacunar infarcts is really small vessel lipohyalinosis okay this is the most common cause mitral valve disease that can also give you lacunar infarcts but small vessel hyalinosis is more common than mitral valve disease okay so to me it's an obvious one I look for small vessels, I look for hyalinosis, and I know that this is lacuna infarcts because there's two small little pockets filled with clear fluid in the deep structures. And by deep structures, they mean basal ganglia or, you know, that area, the basal ganglia area. So let's talk about the, some of the other options. What about carotid, carotid atherosclerosis? Carotid atherosclerosis can still give you um, can still give you a stroke just like this one, but the only difference but the only difference is um, it's more common to have a lacunar stroke than a, than a carotid atherosclerosis stroke, and that would have been a single one rather than couple. When you see couple, you have to think that it's more lacunar strokes are more you know. They are not one single stroke. They are a couple of strokes, very, very small couple of strokes together. It's, it's just when you see a, a CT scan, you will see that they are kind of patchy. So it's not in one particular position. They are kind of patchy there. They can be over a, over a region of area. So that's why carotid atherosclerosis could really be the answer. But I choose not to go in that direction. It's because the more common is going to be lacunar strokes. Malignant cell hyper, uh, sorry, malignant cell infiltration, that is not going to give you a clear fluid filled cavity. That's going to give you a mass. So that's out of the uh, option. Choice D, oligodendrocyte, oligodendrocyte, I don't know why I am mixing up words. Uh, oligodendrocyte apoptosis, that is more commonly seen in multiple sclerosis rather than lacunar strokes. So, because again, she has a previous history of stroke, she is very old, and she has a couple of cavities of five millimeter in size. This is the most diagnostic is lacunar stroke than any other stroke, and the most common cause of lacunar stroke is going to be small vessel hy hypo uh, lipohyalinosis. See, carotid is not a small vessel. 
Yeah, it ha also has to be a small vessel lipohyalinosis rather than a large vessel.